Planned Parenthood is suing the state of Idaho to block its new heartbeat law. Idaho's law is modeled after the Texas law, which the U.S. Supreme Court has allowed to remain in effect despite similar legal challenges. Idaho's law is slated to take effect on April 22nd. Well, Oklahoma and Arizona pass legislation to protect women's sports. The two states join more than a dozen other states with similar laws which prohibit transgender women from competing in women's sports. And joining us now is Maria Keffler, co-founder of Advocates Protecting Children and author of Desist, Detrans, and Detox, Getting Your Child out of the gender call. Maria, welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about all these states passing laws banning transgender women who are biological males uh, from participating in women's sports. Why do you think this is gaining so much traction? You know, I think this has been a really strategic effort on the part of trans rights activists to take, um, they've taken the language captured. Um, I prefer not to call these transgender women because they are men, they are men. And um, we need to recognize that. We need to recognize that sex is binary and asking people to play on teams that correspond with their biological sex is not wrong. It's not bigoted. It's not hateful. And when I see um, headlines like um, the governor, you know, hates trans people, wants to keep them from playing sports, that's not accurate. That's that's not good reporting. The the real story is that boys and men need to play on boys and men's teams to protect women and girls sports. Yeah, and there are many states, as you know, as mentioned, are kind of pushing back on that and, and kind of banning that. I, I want to get your perspective on that. Um, on banning um, girls and, or boys from playing in girls' sports, is that? Exactly. I, I, I really just want to emphasize boys and men need to play on their own teams because once boys and men start playing in women's sports, like we've seen with um, the UPenn swim team and I'm going to call him Will Thomas. Um, it, it, it takes away those opportunities from women. Uh, men, especially who've been through puberty, have a lot of advantages, physical advantages over women. It is the end of women's sports when men play in women's sports. Yeah, um, something that came out just recently, the Washington Post is reporting that the Department of Education is considering enacting uh, new laws under Title IX uh, that would include gender identity. Title IX, as many people know, uh, bars discrimination on the basis of sex and education. That said, if enacted, how significant do you think that would be? Oh, I think it's incredibly significant. If sex is replaced with gender identity in law, that means sex categories no longer legally exist. There is no such thing as a woman. If anyone can identify as a woman, women's protections will be gone. We're seeing the erosion of our privacy, of our rights. We no longer are able to have those safe single sex spaces. Gender identity, the definition of that is how one feels about one's gender. Any fifth grader can tell you you cannot define a word using the word that you're trying to define. Gender identity is essentially meaningless. It's just how you feel about yourself. And by replacing sex with gender identity under law, we allow any man to identify as a woman, enter women's spaces, and we know that there are predators who take advantage of that. We see that already. Yeah, we have probably less than a minute left, but I do really want to get your perspective on this. Um, as our own Jensen reported earlier, HHS released a document today advocating for gender-affirming care, including surgeries for young people, adolescents. Um, I, I want to get your thoughts on that. How do you feel about that? You know, again, they've captured the language with some of these words that they're using. So-called gender-affirming care, what that means is putting someone in a lifelong path to medicalization. And this is over the way people feel about themselves. In no other area of, of medicine do we ask someone, how do you feel about yourself? Well, we're going to medicalize you because of that. Those are mental health issues. And when people are put on this path to medicalization, very often they are medical customers for life, whether they detransition, um, they've stopped making their own hormones and they've got to take synthetic hormones. Um, it's really a disaster for children and that's what this so-called affirming medical care is. Yeah, Marie, we had so much more we could talk to you about. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but thank you so much for coming on and giving us thank your analysis. You. We appreciate it.